dynamic programming solution method. So this programming method is uh, compared to the uh, priority list method. This is one of the best method which gives the accurate result, accurate solution to the unit commitment problem. So it has the advantage over the enumerous uh, uh, available scheme, schemes. The main advantages of this method is the dimensionality, dimensionality of the problem. Suppose if you have found the units in a system and any, num uh, any combination of them could serve the load. So we can carry out the number of combinations uh, which are the uh, best units we can use to supply the load at the particular hour. So if in this case, there would be maximum of, there would be maximum of uh, 23 combinations to test. In this case, there would be maximum of 23 combinations to test. However, if you follow the uh, priority order strictly, then there will be only four combinations to try. One second. Four combinations to try. First one is uh, priority one unit. Next. Next step will be priority unit one plus priority two unit. Likewise, you need to go for priority orders. Or if you follow the, so in this method, again, there are uh, few assumptions we will make. So these are the assumptions we made in uh, priority list method. Apart from this, the few more assumptions are made here. The first one is the startup cost of a unit is independent of the time it has been offline. So startup, startup cost of any unit, if you consider, we will consider it as it is independent of the time it has been in offline. And second point is there are no costs for shutting down a unit. So if you shut down a unit, there will be no uh, no costs are considered, and there is a there is a strictly uh, strict priority order, and in each each interval a specified minimum rest offline amount of capacity must be operating. So these are the three assumptions in dynamic programming method. So this uh, there is a method in dynamic programming method that is forward dynamic programming approach. So this is one of the uh, best approach to for the unit commitment solution. Let us see how this method works. So here uh, following assumptions are made in this uh, forward dynamic programming approach. Uh, individual production costs are known. So we will assume the individual production costs of each units are known. The load cycle is known the load cycle is known and the load on each unit changes in let us consider the load on each unit changes in small steps load on each unit is changes in small steps so with this assumption let us take an example let us consider again a plant with four units let us consider a plant with four units let us consider a plant with four units now so these four units has to supply let us say four megawatt uh, four units should supply four megawatt and the load varies in step size of one megawatt let us say the load is varying in step size of one megawatt from hourly to hour so given the production cost of all the units uh, the unit commitment problem can be solved as follows so this unit commitment problem can be solved with the help of this forward dynamic approach dynamic programming approach The step one is uh, we should consider the any two ar uh, units arbitrarily. We should consider the any two units arbitrarily, and these uh, two units should be committed. Two units to be committed, and they determine most economical combination for all the uh, discrete load levels. Let's assume unit one and unit two are committed to supply the four megawatt. We have the following options. So, if unit one supplies the four megawatt unit 2 will be 0. Here we have considered only any two, any two units, arbitrarily any two units. So first unit, if first unit supplies the 4 megawatt, unit 2 will supply 0. 
if the unit 1 supplies 3 megawatt unit 2 supplies 1 megawatt if the unit 2 unit 1 supplies 2 megawatt unit 2 should supply 2 megawatt if the unit 1 supply 1 megawatt and the unit 2 should supply remaining 3 megawatt if unit 1 is supplying uh, no power 0 megawatt then uh, unit 2 should supply the 4 megawatt so in available 4 units in available 4 units available four units the first step is we consider only two units arbitrarily any two units so among these two units so these are the possible combinations these are the possible combinations that is unit one supplying four megawatt power and the unit two supplying zero megawatt power similarly unit one supplying three megawatt unit two one megawatt unit one two megawatt unit two two megawatt unit one one megawatt unit two three megawatt unit 1 0 unit to 4 megawatt so this is the first step we need to carry out next step will be so here for each of the combination we need to determine the cost of producing 4 megawatt so in this first step we have five combinations five combinations so for each combination for each combination we need to determine the cost of production we need to determine the cost of power uh, producing 4 megawatt and we need to choose the choose the the best combination which is the lowest cost we need to choose the best combination which is the lowest cost likewise uh, determine the best option for supplying similarly we need to uh, we have, now this procedure is carried out for 4 megawatt of power 4 megawatt of power Similarly, we should carry out the uh, same procedure for uh, supplying 3 megawatt of power. If there is a 3 megawatt of power, the same step we need to carry out. Similarly, for 2 megawatt and 1 megawatt with 2 units only. With 2 units only. That is the first step. Depends on the load. Uh, first stuff. First in first step, we'll consider any any two units arbitrarily. Any two units arbitrarily. Coming to second step. Second step here, uh, we will introduce the third unit as we considered earlier in the uh, in this. Uh, here we have four units totally, right? In the first step, we have used only two units. If the third unit is introduced, if the third is third unit is committed now, if the third unit is committed now to meet the four megawatt uh, power, now we have the following options. We have the following options unit one and unit two together supplying 4 megawatt so in first step unit 1 and unit 2 uh, whatever the most economical combination from the step 1 from the step 1 among these five combinations either of any one combination is best suited depends on the lowest cost production cost of 4 megawatt we will choose that uh, combination and put together unit 1 and unit 2 put together will supply the 4 megawatt of power 4 megawatt of power and the unit 3 the the unit that is committed now unit 3 will be zero uh, supplying zero megawatt and if the unit 1 and 2 if unit 1 and 2 supplies 3 megawatt of power if unit 1 and 2 supplies 3 megawatt of power the most economical combination of uh, step 1 for 3 megawatt for as you can see here for 4 megawatt we have found out for 4 megawatt we have found out Similarly, we should find out for the 3 megawatt. For 3 megawatt of power, we should find out the most economical combination from the step 1. And here, the unit 1 and 2 together will supply the 3 megawatt power, and unit 3 will supply the 1 megawatt of power. So, this uh, combination should go on. So, if the unit 1 and 2 together supply 2 megawatt, then unit 3 should supply 2 megawatt again. And if the unit one and two together supply one megawatt, unit three should uh, unit three should supply three megawatt. So these combinations will go on. So for each combination, for each combination, the cost of producing four megawatt again, the cost of producing four megawatt with three units. Here the third unit is committed, so we should include the uh, there the number of units here in this step will be three units. So with three units is computed and the one with least cost is 
committed. So what uh, three units committed, three units committed. The one with least combination, least uh, cost combination should be committed, should be committed. So this is, this is step two. Step three is, now as we considered earlier, there were four units. If the fourth unit is committed now, if the fourth unit is committed now, the fourth unit is committed now, and the proce uh, process repeated as in case of the step one and step two. So we have to do the same uh, procedure as we uh, discussed in the step one and step two. One second. Hello. So if the four, fourth unit is also committed, then the same procedure we need to calculate if the for different combinations, unit one, unit two, unit three, and unit four supplying the four megawatt of power, we need to do the all possible combinations and we need to select the best possible, best combination, which is the lowest cost. Thus, in this approach, having obtained the optimal way of loading uh, K units here, uh, we have considered the four units for example. So in general, optimal way of loading K, K units, K number of units, it is easy to determine the optimal loading of K plus one units. If you determine the uh, best possible combination for supplying, let us say we have the four megawatt of power supply we need to uh, meet. So if the two units we have determined, if the two units we have determined the best possible, best optimal way of loading the two units, let us say the combination of these two, any two units will supply the three megawatt of power with economically, with economically three megawatt of power, then the remaining one unit the remaining one unit loading, the optimal loading of the remaining K plus one unit, it is easy to determine. So plus one, the third unit loading, it is easy to determine. So the uh, systematic mathematical formulation for the above procedure is presented. So whatever this procedure we have discussed now, step one, step two, step three. So these uh, steps we can put it in, uh, in terms of the uh, mathematical formulation. So to do that, let us define some of the following uh, quantities. The total function cost, the total function cost, let us take it as Fn of x, Fn, Fn of x. So which is minimum, which is the minimum cost, minimum cost in rupees per hour for generating x megawatt, make x megawatt with n number of units, with n number of units. So for example, if F2 of 10, Function is F2 of 10 means, with the, which means the minimum cost of generating 10 megawatt of power with two units. So F2 of 10 means it is a function with minimum cost of generating the 10 megawatt of power with the help of two units. So that is the meaning, function meaning. Next, we let us take another function, small fn of y, small fn of y. So the meaning of this is the uh, cost of generating y megawatt, cost of generating y megawatt with nth unit, with a single unit here, with the nth unit. So for example, let us say f2 of 10, small f2 of 10 indicates, it is the cost of generating 10 megawatt by the second unit. It is a single unit, only a single unit. If it is f1 of 10, it is a first unit. f2 of 10, it is second unit. f3, f3 of 10 means it is third unit. Uh, it, is, it is the cost of generating the 10 megawatt of power by the respective unit. Y, y megawatt of power with nth unit, that is the meaning. So if you put together in terms of mathematical uh, formulation, your equation will be, the application of this dynamic program results in a, it is a recursive relation. So this we can write it as a, Fn of x, so this is the cost that we need to minimize in order to generate the 
uh, x megawatt of power with the uh, while committing n number of units so this function should be minimum this function should be minimum which is which is given by fn of y plus fn of fn minus 1 into x minus y so this is the mathematical relation which gives the above procedure so in this above formula x megawatt are generated by totally n units x megawatt this x megawatt is totally fn of x x megawatt of power generated by committing n number of units out of this y megawatt of power y megawatt of power is generated by the nth unit at a cost of fn of y so here this fn of y represents y is the um, power generated in megawatt by the nth unit by the nth unit so out of this y megawatt or megawatt of power are generated by the nth unit at a cost of fn of y at a cost of fn of y and x minus y megawatt of power are generated by x minus y that is this is the total power required this is the total power required fn of uh, x is the total power required total power required if we generate the y megawatt y megawatt of power from any one unit if you generate the y megawatt of power from any one unit the remaining power to be generated is x minus y the remaining power to be generated is x minus y so it is x minus so the remaining x minus y megawatt of power is generated with the help of the n minus 1 number of units so here uh, one unit this fn of y it is a one unit a power generated one unit power generated so one unit is generated y amount of power one unit is either it may be any number generator or first generator second generator or third unit fourth unit likewise so one unit that has generated y megawatt of power already the remaining power x minus y total power to be generated is x right in this some amount y is already generated by the nth unit that is any one unit one unit is generated the remaining remaining x minus y power remaining x minus y power are generated by the n n minus one number of units n minus one number of units so from the above this recursive relation we can easily determine the combination of units which yields the minimum operating cost for various loads in convenient steps and from the minimum permissible load of the smallest unit to the sum of the capabilities of the all available units so this is the procedure to be followed for solving the unit commitment problem with this is the dyna forward dynamic programming approach